Tokyo Dark Remembrance is an adventure game that claims to merge the best elements of point and click with a dark and grimy narrative usually found in the best of visual novels. Promising a world that reacts to the choices you make and with a film noir style, is it as good as it sounds? Well, I'm Glenn for Switch Up. Thank you to the developers for the review copy, and now let's find out. Tokyo Dark Remembrance's story sees you take control of Detective Ayumi Ito of the Tokyo Metropolitan Police as she searches for her partner who disappeared a couple of weeks prior to the opening scene of the game. Investigating the first lead you've had since it happened, you find yourself in a dangerous part of town, and it's not long before it becomes clear that recent happenings are linked to events in Ayumi's past. The beginning of the game, which sees you switch between past and present events as you play out Ayumi's memories, has a touch of film noir storytelling to it, with the protagonist detective using internal monologue to deliver exposition, but the delivery of this is a little too clumsy and obvious at times to really pull it off, especially in those early stages, although it does improve as the story progresses. When the main character isn't monologuing and is instead conversing with non-playable characters, the dialogue is much better. Managing to be intriguing, chilling, comedic and upsetting at various times throughout the story. The story deals with mature themes and you will come into contact with some nasty people as you carry out your investigation. There is also a psychological horror element to it and the game deploys many techniques to unsettle you as you play. Subliminal images will flash up fairly often or the screen will gain a grainy filter effect to name a couple and I liked these little touches. It's moments like these that show just what visual novels can offer that traditional reading cannot. You will visit various locations as your investigation unfolds and this generally equates to walking across a 2D plane. As you walk, small squares will appear against a backdrop whenever you can interact with something. From here, you press the A button to bring up a menu of options of what you can do next. There will be anywhere from one to four options available, each one based somewhere on the square and you press the D-pad in the appropriate direction to pick your desired option. Dialogue options when speaking to other characters are handled in exactly the same way. If there is more than one square on the screen at any one time, you can cycle through them by pressing the L and R buttons. Some of these squares will be placed on doors, and you can then choose to enter particular buildings, which does open up the game world a touch, therefore offering a little more complexity. Even with this though, things do feel a little too arbitrary at first, with puzzles basically boiling down to walking to the right, choosing an action, walking to the left, speaking to someone, walking back to the right, and clicking on the follow-up action. Thankfully, the locations become larger and the course of action a little less obvious as you play. Puzzles are still never too difficult, mainly boiling down to getting the information you need from someone, either by a correct trail of questioning or by helping them with a problem, but you do start to feel as if you are thinking and solving things for yourself rather than merely being led via a trail of metaphorical breadcrumbs. In fact, further into the game, you will need to decide where to go next in order to aid your investigation further. You do this by using your map and new locations will become available as you discover them through questioning witnesses. At this point, the game becomes much more interesting as you switch locations looking for people or clues you need in order to help someone in another part of town. As is mentioned in the blurb on the eShop, Tokyo Dark Remembrance is almost a hybrid of point and click and visual novel. Because of this, you won't be picking up items and finding a use for them later, as you would in a traditional point and click. In fact, the game increases your neurosis score for idly clicking on things, and we'll talk more about this later. Whilst this does add to the more linear, arbitrary feel of the puzzle solving, as was just mentioned, it does also trim the fat so that the storytelling from the visual novel part can be more prevalent. Perhaps it doesn't always walk the line between the two genres perfectly, electing to become too story heavy and thus watering down the investigative parts at times, but it does merge the two genres well enough that it has certainly piqued my interest in such games in the future. The game's main mechanic is called the SPIN system, which is an acronym for Sanity, Professionalism, Investigation and the aforementioned Neurosis. Basically, these four headings will shape your character journey throughout your playtime. Decisions you make will increase or decrease each of these areas. Accept an alcoholic beverage whilst on duty, or flirt with a suspect and you will lose professionalism points, although it may lead you to getting the information you need, therefore earning you investigation points. The information for this can be accessed at any time by pressing the Y button. It's an interesting system that gets you to think about how you should approach certain scenarios and what sort of reputation your actions are earning you, so you get an idea of how your character is currently holding up. 
This system isn't really explained to you at the start of the game, apart from a quick throwaway line from your boss, so you may find that you've made a couple of choices that affect your character before you even know what's happening. You'll work it out for yourself soon enough though, and it comes into play properly after about an hour of playing, becoming a much more prominent system at this point. From here you will need to manage your spin numbers by electing to take medication, which will help your sanity score but may lower your investigative abilities. It becomes a balancing act of doing what you must do to progress the story whilst looking after your character's well-being and mindset to keep her functioning properly. It's an interesting micromanagement aspect to a game in which you wouldn't necessarily expect to find one. The story intrigues and after a slightly rocky start is generally well written and scores 16 out of 20. Gameplay attempts to merge two genres and is successful for the most part and scores 14 out of 20. Visually, Tokyo Dark Remembrance employs a number of different art styles, from the manga style drawings of the characters to the backgrounds which take a number of forms. Some have an almost photographic look to them, whilst the majority use a more traditional hand-drawn style, and at times the strong colours and bold black outlines together with the Japanese setting give the impression of Japanese woodblock printing. I especially liked the moody skies of downtown, with its neon signs and silhouetted passers-by making it feel alive yet hauntingly empty at the same time. Tokyo Dark Remembrance uses a variety of cutscenes at times, some animated, some still, but also some that use different art styles, such as a pastel coloured look in this example here. It all makes for quite a beautifully macabre experience and I applaud the developers for putting the time into little touches that just help build the atmosphere a notch further. My biggest criticism of the visuals though would be the walking animation of your character. It looks extremely stiff and was quite off-putting at times. It looks at times as if a Yumi has sprained her ankle, or at the risk of sounding crass, like she's wet herself. It's a shame because, as mentioned, the art style elsewhere works very well, and this awkward character animation just lessens the impact a little, at least in my opinion. Holding down B allows a Yumi to run, but this also feels quite awkward to look at, with the camera almost jolting around as if trying to keep up with her. Music is used to build tension and atmosphere for the most part, but this does lead to some rather odd mixes in tone. This dark and foreboding background track as you search an area suddenly changes to a comedic and jovial tune as you interview a dim-witted character. It feels as if the music was chosen to fit each part of the game in isolation with less consideration as to how they would blend together when scenes play out one after the other. That being said, the music itself is of a good standard and certainly did ramp the tension up at times, whilst feeling quite poignant at others. Voice acting wise there is very little, usually with the greeting at the start of a conversation spoken and then the rest given in text form. This is a technique used in a fair few visual novels and it works perfectly well. Visuals are varied and quite creative at times with the awkward character movement letting things down a touch and they receive 14 out of 20. Audio is actually very good in places if a little at odds with itself at times and scores 15 out of 20. Tokyo Dark Remembrance costs £16.19, €17.99 or $19.99, which in terms of its eShop competition is cheaper than most visual novels and perhaps on par if not a little more expensive than some point and click games. Due to the spin system, characters will react differently to you depending on your actions, giving scope for future playthroughs and in fact the game has 13 different endings and whilst with some games fatigue sets in long before you attempt the multiple endings on offer, I do not see that being as big an issue with this one and personally I would happily replay it to try and right a few wrongs of my first playthrough. Value scores 15 out of 20. To conclude, Tokyo Dark Remembrance is an interesting mixture of a point and click adventure game and a visual novel. If you are solely looking for a point and click, you may find this a little too linear, but if you enjoy visual novels and like them to have a bit of interaction to them, then you may find this is a very good fit to your tastes. If you are mildly interested, but not fully convinced, my recommendation would be to add it to the wishlist and wait for a sale of around 30%. Tokyo Dark Remembrance gets a switch up score of 74%. Thank you as always everybody for watching, I hope you enjoyed this review, please do remember to leave a like if you did. A huge thank you to our patrons as always for your continued support, if you would like to join them the links will be down in the description. 
and thank you to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, and until next time, happy gaming.